Hi, good morning, boys and girls. Today is Wednesday, May 27th, year's 2020. This is a review for Yamaha. Um, I started working there at the Yamaha Plant 2 North Dock in Noonan, Georgia. And I started working there in December up until the shutdown in March. And they shut down due to the COVID coronavirus, which I hope everyone's safe and I hope everyone's okay. Um, but they voluntarily shut down and we all were out of week work for seven weeks I think and then they reopened the plant and uh, you could go back to work I haven't gone back to work because I decided not to go back there I decided it's not a good working environment um, it's mentally dangerous to work there because the supervisors and the team leads and the utilities they all break the rules and then they all try to be hateful to you and they cuss you out for doing it and for breaking the rules that they break you're not allowed to be on your cell phone but all the supervisors walk around with their cell phone in their hand and there are several of the supervisors that just come back to north dock on in plant two just so they can use their cell phones and they hide behind the bins we have um really big plastic uh bins that you stack on top of each other and they contain the parts that you put on the uh, tugs when they take to the assembly line. And when they're hiding behind the bins and then you have to pick that bin up with a forklift, um, it's scary. Because what if you crush that person, there's a pinch point. Any forklift driver knows that there's a pinch point and no human being should be standing in a pinch point. But yet the supervisors, and I'm talking about Donna and Tommy and uh, Chick, they all do it. They all come back there and there's this one little skinny guy and they all come back there and they hide behind the bins to use their cell phones which if you get caught doing it you get rode up or you get fired especially if you're a temp um if you are a temp don't expect to be treated with respect you will get no respect there at all um they call you greenies which means you know because you wear a green shirt and um that's how they you know they more or less um stereotype you in a group with the green people the green people oh it was one of the green people and supervisors do not like temps especially donna um she's got a nasty attitude towards temps she cusses and yells and screams and then she does it over the radio and then there's a radio that everyone uses and everyone can hear everything you're saying over the radio and she threatens people over the radio like if you're a temp and you've been on the job one day and they're constantly changing the specs they're constantly changing the line balance. They're constantly doing something new, like they're trying to make the line faster. So if you're a temp, you're not going to know all of these things. And if you're new, and especially when you've got one lead or one utility <clears throat> that's trying to run 20 temps, and they don't train you properly or they forget to tell you something. Oh, I forgot to tell her that. And they didn't forget to tell you. They try to sabotage you. Like I said, if you're a green shirt, you get treated different. Um, examples of that, there's a lot of supervisors that treat their um, green shirts different. Like Chick, she works on North Dock. I mean, she works in Plant 2 also. And uh, she's got a really nasty attitude. She cusses and yells and screams at temps. Donna cusses and yells and screams at temps. Um, Tommy McKenzie is a really good supervisor to work for the only issue is is that he lets his utilities and his leads break policies that they swear up and down that you'll get written up for that the green shirts will get written up for and then like i said he has a crush on liz and she's the main forklift driver on north dock and so he lets her get away with murder and i mean murder she she does a decent job um she's airheaded she's She's um, <clears throat> not very smart about a lot of things that she does. She does it just because she gets away with it. Because, like I said, Tommy has this silly boy crush, this silly, you know, high school crush or elementary crush on her. And you can tell he has a crush on her because the way he comes up and talks to her. And you, I know you've probably seen people, and like, they, they have a crush on someone. They'll, like, dance beside them or they'll, like, you know talk to him and they'll twist their body or they'll play with their hair and you can tell that he likes her because he does a lot of those things while he's talking to her and then she smiles at him and she's so sweet she's like oh mr tommy mr tommy 
and then he runs up and he's all up her ass every five minutes and like I said she gets away with all the bullshit that she does and she's scatterbrained she doesn't keep up with her task um, the line gets behind because of her on a regular basis and if you are working with Liz on North Dock she will tell you that you are a team but there is no L in team so how could you possibly be a team because she has to be in charge and if she's not in charge she will threaten you um, that she's going to I have to talk to Tommy about this today because you didn't do what I told you to do or blah 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 or she'll try to scare you which you know don't worry I'm not tell Tommy today maybe I tell Tommy tomorrow and she's just she's a child about it <clears throat> okay and then also there's this lady who works her name Paige Paige is a basket case she cries all day every single day and if you have resting bitch face like I do I have resting bitch face and <clears throat> um, so you look angry all the time maybe or you look like you're just not happy because you have resting bitch face and she takes it personally um, she's afraid of you she'll come up to you and she's so meek and are you are you okay and she asks you that question every 30 minutes for the entire eight hours that you will be working and I'm not joking because she comes through to pick up parts at least every 15 to 20 minutes and every time she sees you if you don't wave and smile at her if you're not excited and happy to see her then are you okay what's wrong are you mad at me and I mean literally every 30 minutes all eight hours of the day so just if you can't deal with that type of insecurity and that type of low confidence in a person then you shouldn't work uh, at Yamaha with Paige on North Dock. Um, Mike, he's the utility for North Dock. He works for Tommy. He's Tommy's utility. Um, he is a huge liar. Be careful of him. And he will put the wrong parts on the line constantly and make excuses for it. But if you put the wrong parts on the line, then everybody in the warehouse knows. And he can't wait to run around and tell everybody, oh, she fucked up, she fucked up, she back there fucking up, but I need to replace her. All she does is fuck up all day. But if I put the wrong engine on the line, it's okay because I'm a utility and I've been here all these years and I'm bound to make a mistake eventually, right? But if somebody else does it, she's a fuck up and she needs to be replaced, right? And we all have to wear steel toe boots. Mike never wears his steel toe boots. His steel toe boots look exactly like his cowboy boots, so he wears his cowboy boots instead and then he brags to you that he never wears his steel toe boots. And everyone has to wear uh, safety glasses, and Mike never wears his, and Tommy lets him get away with it and never says anything. Uh, the lead for Tommy, I can't remember his name, but he's a little punk, and he's a little sniveling crybaby. And he will say that Paige isn't doing a good job <clears throat> because maybe um, she put the wrong parts in the wrong location or something, and then he'll walk around all day and say she's not doing a good job, and he doesn't like her work ethic. But when Mike put the wrong engine on the line and the line was shut down for almost an hour because they had to pull all the ATVs off the line, take the engines out, blah, 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 blah. He didn't say anything about that. He didn't walk around and complain about Mike. And I know he didn't because he would complain to me and anybody that would listen about Paige if Paige did something wrong. So he's, and he stuck up Mike's ass. He stuck up Sheila's ass. Sheila, that's another person. She drives a tug for Tommy McKenzie. And she has a nasty, hateful attitude, nasty chip on her shoulder. And she only speaks to you when it's beneficial for her. Um, I used to get a lot of free gifts, and I still do, from the people that I clean houses for. I clean houses on the weekend. And sometimes I would bring in things, and I would give it to Liz. And if Sheila would see me give it to Liz, she would run over there and be all, Hey, smiley and nice and talking and... What did you have? Did you have gifts you were giving to people? But the next day, honey, she's all back to being a mean, hateful bitch all over again because she, she's just a cunt. And then there's this lady. Her name is Catherine. She is a bipolar, anxiety, stress-filled bitch. Be careful of her. I'm just telling you. She's stressed out all goddamn day. And then there's this other guy named Dennis that works back there. And we call him La Lorena or La Lorona or whatever the the weeping woman the movie the la lorena or la lorona the weeping woman that's what we call dennis the weeping woman because he cries and bitches all fucking day 
and he swears up and down all fucking day that he has no room for engines all fucking day but yet if somebody else asks him for something if kevin says you know hey that's what the, the lead guy his name is kevin that's the little pussy bitch that's all up mike's ass all day anyway if you ask dennis you know can you come get something take it out of our area because our area is congested enough no he can't do that but if he's if kevin asks him to do something oh my god he's got the biggest fucking smile on his face and he's all up kevin's ass and trying to accommodate kevin but there's no what i'm trying to say is like mike and kevin and dennis they all like each other they try to accommodate each other they try to make each other's jobs perfect and happy and wonderful but if you are not friends with them or if you're not in their little buddy buddy of their ass system then you're gonna have a shitty life working at yamaha and they're going to make your job visual every single day and then there's this one chick that works there also drives a tug and her name is ro she's a nice person she has a really good attitude she um will help you she will explain to you the different parts and you know she'll she'll help you figure it out like this is this is an even number or this is an odd number this goes on the even side or the odd side and she'll break it down you know like if it's like if it's a, a headlight or a stay light or a tail light or she lets you know why things are the way they are and she helps you to do your job faster and easier and whereas compared to Paige and Liz it's just stress and anxiety all day long now if you can deal with stress and anxiety you can deal with weeping women weeping men that act like women if you can deal with men that lie and you know try to get you in trouble but they don't have on their safety equipment they don't have on their proper PPE um, and if you can deal with you know Donna screaming yelling all day chick acting like a damn fool all day there's one supervisor named Mike I can't remember his last name um, and he's a decent supervisor he's a pretty good guy to work for um, there's one guy on the line to worry about he's an assembler his name is Andy um, I know he has Asperger's disease or something like that and if you are hired on a job and you have a disability you have the right to work but you should not use your disability as a crutch and he uses his disability as a crutch the entire day and if he messes up or if he's rude to you or if he has a nasty hateful attitude then he will use that as an excuse he'll say well you know i have asperger's you know i have asperger's dude it's not a fucking excuse you cannot use your disability as an excuse if you come to work you have to work just like every other fucking person in the building you can't use it as an excuse you can't say oh i'm like this because i'm a scorpio no everybody's an asshole from time to time it doesn't mean that you have asperger's that you could be an asshole or you can use it as a crutch your disability is not a crutch and then also if you're a forklift driver just know that everybody in the warehouse every five fucking feet will step out in front of you they will step out in front of you and then they will say oh well the pedestrian has a right of way of course they fucking do the pedestrian has a right of way in downtown atlanta okay but would you walk across 285 with a goddamn blindfold no the pedestrians at yamaha will not meet you 50 50. they will not turn around as a matter of fact when i was working there one of the guys in plant one is a forklift driver he's in welding um and it was happening on third shift a, a pedestrian just walked out from the forklift and he bounced off the forklift and hit the wall he had a concussion he was in the hospital osha was there um, we were all having to make sure that all of our safety books were filled out for the forklifts and that we were all doing what we were supposed to be doing as good forklift drivers and as good pedestrians and they were putting new blue lights on the forklifts and now they look like they have a blue halo around them but i guarantee you because yamaha tells every stupid employee that works there that they have the right of way they are going to keep stepping out in front of the forklifts they are going to keep being stupid they are going to keep playing footsie and musical fucking chairs with the fucking forklifts they're idiots so just be prepared that they have the right of way and they have no common sense and they do not do not meet you 50 50 and they will step out in the forklift and um they will test you and you as a forklift driver you already have a lot of stress and anxiety on you because if you drop something you're going to get drug tested 
Um, if you can pass a drug test, that's fine. But for the ones that can't pass a drug test, you don't want to be threatened with a fucking drug test every single day, right? Um, and that's another thing, working for Yamaha. <clears throat> if you want to work there full-time, you have to pass a hair follicle drug test. Through the temp service, it's a mouth swab. But uh, full-time, you will get a hair follicle drug test. And you can, you can bid... For jobs after you've been employed with them for 90 days in 90 days do not count your off days you actually have to be employed a full 90 days um, before you can even bid for a job and if you have to call in or if you've ever been late if you have any points then don't even fucking try bidding for a job because the supervisors and the managers there are so cocky and nasty and hateful and they are so entitled um, that if you have one point they will just look at you with this nasty, cocky attitude, and they will say, oh, well, you'll be at the end of the list because you're behind all the other 12 people on my list. They ain't got no points. I mean, how can you be a human being and never have to call in or never be late? Now, I understand there are very few people out there that have that record and have never called in and have, have never had to be late and never leave early, and that's fine. That is just fine and jam dandy. But what happens if you have children? Children get sick. It's inevitable. What happens if you are a human being and you have bad sushi or bad shrimp or just something that made you have really bad diarrhea and you had to call in because you can't be up there at uh, Yamaha on an assembly line trying to go to the bathroom every five minutes because then your supervisor is just going to send you home anyway because they can't replace you a lot if you're on the line having diarrhea or if you're on the line throwing up. Um, you know, it's, it's an assembly line. You, you, you can't be on an assembly line and having to go to the bathroom a lot during all the day. Or if you're driving a forklift or a tug, then no, you, you can't be sick. So if you're a human being and you think you might have to call in for work or be late, and then don't work at Yamaha because they don't make exceptions for human beings. They want you to be a robot and they want you to never have to call in, never be late, never have to leave early. And, um... And if you work for North Doc, if you work for Tommy McKenzie, um, just be prepared. North Dock is extremely cold. It's extremely hot during the summertime, extremely cold during the wintertime. They have heaters, but the doors stay up all day. And then the chick that you work with, Liz, she doesn't know how to shut doors, and she opens doors when they don't need to be open. And then every idiot at Yamaha... It's going to ask you if you're cold. What the fuck? It's, it's below zero outside. Of course I'm fucking cold. And if you have on a jacket or if you have on a hat or a scarf or something to keep you warm, then they all make fun of you, which is really stupid. Um, or if you're sweating, then they all going to ask you the same stupid question. Are you hot? No, this is just fucking Niagara coming out of my head, you goddamn idiot. So they're not very intelligent people there. You don't have to be very intelligent to work at Yamaha, which is a good thing. Because I know there's a lot of stupid people in the world. Um, so if you're, you know, if you worry that you won't get a job because you're not very intelligent, don't worry. You'll get hired at Yamaha if you can just never call in, never be late, never have to leave early. And um, when I worked there, I did have to call in one time because I had car trouble. Um, I was never late and I never had to leave early. But I'm a human being and my vehicle breaks down on occasion. Just like the vehicles that they build there are going to break down on occasion. That's why you don't get a more than a two or three year warranty on it. Because after a while it's just going to break down and you're, you know, you're going to have to call in. But anyway, um, that's just my review for Yamaha. Um, and if you don't feel the same way I feel, I don't give a fuck. And I hope you have a nice day. A nice day. Bye.